Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our Thursday night Anankara meditation program. And with all my heart, with all my love, I welcome you to our program this evening. So good of you to join us and uh, get together for satsang. Uh, it's a practice. It's a practice of keeping the company of the truth. And the truth is, you're the divine. So that's the company we want to keep. And to be able to gather uh, with a group who is, you know, really doing the practices and uh, doing what it takes to be able to become more and more fully aware of that and walk that into the world. Ah, it's such a privilege to be in your company. So thank you for coming. Um, and in a moment, we're going to open up the mics and, and video so people can uh, join in. You can do that now. Tonight is going to be more of a, uh, a chanting and meditation night. Uh, so I'll be getting into that in a few minutes. Uh, before we do, anybody have anything they, else they wanted to add or share or question? I, I kind of had I kind of had a thought. Yeah, all right. That's very unusual for me, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, but no, I was just thinking um, about about the idea of uh, is part of the path of enlightenment to you know when you're on the path, you have a little bit more free will to, for your, for choosing your actions and words as compared to pre path where you have much less free will and it's much more like reactionary and all that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's a good question because part of, you know, enlightenment is such a vague term. Yeah. Um, getting free. We, it dials us a little bit closer into what are we getting free of? Well, primarily we're getting free of two things. One is the conditioned mind and we're repatterning that. So the practices are really aimed at repatterning the mind and body. So they, they are free of all the conditioned patterns from this lifetime, past lifetimes. I mean, depending on what tradition one follows, some only believe in this lifetime, it's fine. We still have conditioned patterns operating from this lifetime that we want to get free of. Um, so that's the transformation of mind and body around reactivity. And the more we get free of that, the, the less we're on autopilot. Um, just, you know, going through life with the automaticity of reactions. We hear something, rah, 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 this goes off. Or we see something, oh, that's just that. You know, but it's, it's on autopilot. That's the problem. The other level of freedom, which is much more profound uh, and much deeper, is the freedom from being identified with any of that. Any of that. So we're getting free of being identified with the mind-body instrument itself. Right? So there's two levels. One seems very practical. Hey, it's good to get deconditioned. That's all the stuff that then gets researched and used in various, everything from clinical context to peak performance context, all those different things. That has to do with the level of freedom. And you can say then free will, because you don't have free will if you're just on autopilot. Um, so it enhances that. You have freedom of choice. You're not just driven by the amygdala, old patterns, things like that. But the, the yogic systems, the Buddhist system, uh, the, you know, the, the mystics across traditions, East and West, we're looking for a much more profound level. That's like, that's still viewed as rearranging, you know, the deck chairs on the Titanic. Um, you're still identified with this vehicle that's going to sink because it's going to end, it's going to die. Um, and the Eastern traditions, especially, the, the methodologies, the techniques, the practices are aimed at both levels. So both transform the mind and body so that they are then more easily and more reliably reflective of what your highest nature is. So you're both trying to become aware of your highest nature, but then you want it to be able to come through. So a lot of times we our insight and even our ex some of our experiences um, go further than what our original um, conditioning is. So we start to see, oh, uh, I know how good it feels to be so at peace and at ease and everything like that. And yet my mind still goes. Nah, 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 nah. That's the difference between the deconditioning of the automatic reactivity for the mind and body 
hasn't gone deep enough yet. It'll go. You just keep practicing. But we're starting to have the insight, the awareness. Sometimes it's a, you know, moments of meditation or chanting or a beautiful day or the you know, open sky, whatever it might be that opens our heart and consciousness in that moment um, is pointing towards the truth of who we are, uh, even though we may not be able to sustain it or have it fully reflected in our actions. But we continue doing the practices so that this mind and body then really become instruments in the hands of our highest self. They reflect the wisdom. You know, they reflect the, the four immeasurables that Buddha talked about, the boundless wisdom, um, the boundless joy, the unshakable equanimity, the boundless compassion. Um, those are just all one as consciousness. Uh, that's our highest nature. But if that's not coming through, it's because the conditioned mind is blocking it. So that's what's going on. Does that make sense? Yeah, it sounds like life could be great. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yep, just keep practicing. Exactly. Oh, you're a musician. You're a fabulous musician. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So we, <laughs> we practice. So that's yeah. always, you practice so that you can then improvise, right? Exactly. All right. But you have to know what you're doing to improvise. There you go. So it's the same with sadhana. Wow, that's we want to be able great. to improvise the expression of our divine nature and our recognition of the divine in everyone. And that takes practice. Thank you very much. That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think we're going to shift now uh, into our more program mode. So we get into, into the practices that this was just uh, getting us to, to think about and talk about. So once again, with all my heart and with all my love, I welcome you to our program this evening. Uh, and, you know, we've been doing a practice to begin with to just help quiet the mind and set aside the day, the week, whatever, uh, to come home to the truth of who we are. That's what this practice, this gathering is all about. So we've been doing this practice for a few minutes along with the harmonium where we're just making use of the power of mantra to help calm and shift our consciousness. And it's a very simple mantra. It's two syllables, ah and hum, ah and hum. And it said that the breath comes in, and this is silently, ah. You just sort of imagine hearing ah as the breath comes in and hum as the breath goes out. Ah as the breath comes in and hum as the breath goes out. And with that, we're going to be using the harmonium uh, because we also want to be able to start to slow and deepen the breath. So we use the harmonium as a way of helping to guide the breath to slow down. And so we'll be doing this, the ah, hum, silently in the mind. On the inhalation, hum on the exhalation. Their awareness of I am.
continuing. That background awareness, aham, I am. The awareness of simply being, pure being. And that's the awareness of the infinitude of who we are that really is free, already free, free here and now, free always. So that unbounded aspect of pure consciousness is the foundation of our very being. So when we talk about things like free will and control or what the practices are doing, remember that's all related to the vehicles of mind and body. Yourself, your true nature, your infinite nature, uh, has never been bound, has never been limited in any way. We have the experience of being bound and limited when consciousness becomes identified with mind and body. Then we take on those qualities of whatever this body, this mind, and all the conditioning that it's gone through in this lifetime or past lifetimes, um, that's what then shapes our experience. So the great yogis, the Buddhist masters, the great mystics of East and West um, discovered that, oh, we're not stuck with that. Hmm? That's the ordinary condition of the ordinary mind. But there are these sublime practices that allow us to access that living presence of our divine self. And it seems like presence to the ordinary mind. It seems like an, a different being almost, or another, a divine being even. We project it onto all our images and archetypes of the divine, whether it's the divine masculine, the divine feminine, whether it's gods or goddesses. Those are all projections of our own true nature. Hmm? So the, the great mystics in their wisdom realized, oh, that's another thing we want to stop is projecting it to something separate and realize, oh no, that's, that's the truth of who I am and who you are and you and you and you and everything. Hmm? And to be able to know that, experience that, see that, feel that, taste that, smell that, live in that, here and now, that's what these kinds of practices are all aimed at, is that, that kind of unity, awareness. And one of the great practices uh, that comes is really a part of many traditions uh, is the use of sacred sound. And in the Eastern traditions, that has to do with mantra. Uh, and so mantra is also known as the name of the divine, the name of God, uh, in the sense that just as you call someone by their name and they respond and come, when we call the infinite as our own self, uh, responds. It's there. Uh, it's not so much actually that it responds, it's that we clear the mind to perceive what was already present. Already present. It never leaves. It doesn't have to be called because there's no place for it to go. But that again, that's perception of mind. The limited mind lives in this duality. And that's part of uh, what it has to dissolve in meditative states. Not that we're going to then not be able to also perceive duality because in a conventional world of conventional awareness, we need that perception, but we don't have to be bound by it. We don't have to be limited by it. Right now, that dominates our experience. What we want is to know the infinitude of our being and know that this projection that we would call Lawrence or Rez or whoever um, is just that. It's an emanation of our own divine sense of being. Hmm? So that's part of the shift in consciousness that begins to happen. Uh, and, and really, when we, the more we go into that, we realize the experience can't be adequately described in words at all. It's, it's ineffable. It's inexpressible. So the, the mind and speech fumbles uh, at trying to convey even what that is, when really what we need is to just become immersed in that. 
And for that reason, we're going to do the practices that help us do that. So we're going to start with chanting. And uh, we'll be chanting for a while. And then we'll be sitting in the stillness. So the chant is mantra. Uh, and it's mantra that is uh, really considered another way of describing mantra is the sound form of the divine. So it's literally a throb of the infinite. Uh, our ordinary thinking is a throb of the mind. So our ordinary thinking keeps us spinning around within the maze of the mind. Mantra penetrates the mind from the infinitude of our true self. And then it transforms that. It transforms the body. A sound of mantra penetrates right down to the marrow of our bones. So taking refuge in mantra, taking refuge in the name, taking refuge in the sound form of the infinite, taking refuge in the sound form of your own self, these are all ways of talking about what is this sublime practice of mantra about. And whether we're chanting it aloud or just repeating it silently in our mind, even repeating it silently during the day as we go about things, it becomes an anchor that keeps us aware that, oh, that living presence, hmm, just as that living throb of Om Namah Shivaya, uh, Shivoham, Shivoham, uh, these mantras are arising and emanating from our own light of consciousness. That's where the sages first heard these, in deep meditation. And it wasn't just then. I've met countless people who've gone into meditation and spontaneously started hearing mantras. They didn't even know what they were. Uh, but they're that throb of the infinite, a rising side. Hmm? And it's almost like a life preserver being given to us, drowning in the world, by the divine says, here, take hold of this. Hmm? Take hold of this. It'll buoy you. It'll carry you through anything. Om Namah Shivaya. Shiva Hum, Shiva Hum. I am Shiva. I am Shiva. I am the Shiva means uh, the auspicious one, the absolute, the unbounded freedom of, of the infinite expression of love, of compassion, of wisdom, of grace. These are ways that, again, words flounder trying to point at what is so far beyond them. Uh, but it helps the mind to have that sense that, oh, this is no ordinary sound, this is no ordinary language, this is a throb of our very self. So the more we can let go and ride that throb, the more the currents of that can take us into the ocean of our own being. That's where we want to go. So we'll begin. Shivoham, 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 Shivoham. Shivoham, 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 Shivoham. Chidanandaropaha. Shivoham, Shivoham. Chidanandaropaha. Shivoham, Shivoham. Shivoham, 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 Shivoham. Shivoham, 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 Shivoham. Chidanandaropaham. Shivoham, Shivoham. Chidanandaropaham. Shivoham, Shivoham. Shivoham, 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 Shivoham. Shivoham, 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 Shivoham. Chidanandaropaha. Shivoham, Shivoham. Chidanandaropaha. Shivoham, Shivoham. All is one, all is one, all is one, Shivoham. All is one, all is one, all is one, Shivoham. Chidananderopaha, Shivoham, Shivoham. 
Just rest in the silent repetition, silent, arising of the mantra. Mantra arises out of silence and dissolves into silence. So keep the mind enveloped in mantra so it can dissolve back into its source, that silence. That stillness, the loving embrace of the divine within. Rest there.
and close with this chant to the Great Mother, the Divine Mother, Om Kali Ma, Kali Durga, Namo Namo. Practices all about empowering us, empowering us to know the truth of who we are, and then to live that into the world, to walk that into the world, to see, to see through the eyes of love, to see as the divine sees, is to see through the eyes of love, so that all you see is the divine, is all beings, is all creation, is your own self. This is the transformation that occurs through the grace, the grace of the practices, the grace of the divine moving through us to remove all the impediments that stand in our way from knowing that directly, moment by moment. This is, this is the realization of the highest purpose of a human birth, to know that freedom, to live that freedom, and to vibe invite others into that state of freedom so we can transform this world. So thank you for being ones who do that, who do the practices, who live that into the world, each one of you in your own ways, in your own lives, living the truth of the infinite, the divine, your own self, into your lives, your relationships, your work, everything. Mm, so sublime. Thank you. And thank you for coming this evening, and thank you for the many ways that you support Anamkara and uh, the seva that we do of trying to make these kinds of practices.
practices and these ancient traditions and ancient, the ancient wisdom uh, available to everyone. It's, it's not possessed by any one person, any one tradition, anything. And this is the birthright of all humans to know this, to live this, to feel that grace and that transformation. So thank you uh, for supporting us in doing that by you know, sharing the e-newsletter, sharing these programs, sharing the videos. Uh, even if something as simple as liking the videos and giving them, you know, whatever rating or, you know, liking the publications, the books and giving them stars, any of those things actually helps to make it more available to people. So thank you for doing that. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you again in November. So namaste. <laughs>